Hey, in this series, we're using Chainlink functions to bring weather data into our smart contract. If you haven't been following along, there's a link to the full playlist in the description below. All right, so we've talked about what we're gonna be creating. We've gotten our testnet funds. We've used the playground to create the JavaScript that we're using within our functions call, and we've even created our subscription. The next step that we'll need to do is to create our smart contract and get that deployed. How do we go about doing that? Well, the best place to start is the documentation. So if you head to docs.chain.link and go to the Chainlink functions documentation, you should see something like this. So here we have the functions documentation. And if we click on getting started, you'll notice that there is a smart contract that we can open in Remix if we scroll down just a little bit. So we'll go ahead and click open in Remix, and that will take us to this smart contract. Now, I will say this smart contract has some changes that are gonna be made to it in order for it to work. The first major thing that we'll need to change is this smart contract is hard-coded to work on the Polygon Mumbai network, and we're working on the Ethereum Sepolia network. So we'll need to change a few things for that. So what do we need to change? Well, if we scroll through, there's two places where we need to change. The first is this router address here, and the second is the Don ID down below. Now, both of them note that they're hard-coded for Mumbai, and they give you a link to the documentation for the supported networks. If we take that link and we follow it, we can click on Sepolia Testnet, and that will take us to the information that we need. So the first is this router. We'll copy the router address, head back to Remix, and paste the router in here. The next thing that we need is the Don ID, which we'll grab here. And we'll come back and paste in the Don ID right here. So we're no longer hard coded for Mumbai. Now, this example is set up to call a Star Wars API and get a character name back. Remember, we're using it to get the weather. So we need to change that. We need to change this source information here. And what we need to do is we need to grab the code that we were using in the functions playground from the previous video in this series. And one thing to note is that we need to do that and have each line of the code have quotation marks around it. Another option is you can combine all the code into one single line, but I'm gonna follow this example just so that we can see it. All right, so if we replace this code with the code from ours, we can we'll walk through this briefly. We have our latitude and longitude that are passed in as arguments. If we don't have those, we set a default value. Uh, then we make an API request to open Mateo. And if there's an error, we throw that error message. Otherwise, we get the temperature data. We log that temperature data, and then we return the temperature rounded. The rest of this can be left the same. We have a callback gas limit. That's how much gas the functions call can use when it comes back into our smart contract. What do I mean by comes back into our smart contract? Well, let's take a look down below and we'll see what that means. Uh, the next thing that we need to change is this character. So we have a string called character and we're going to change that to be a uint256. And instead of character, we'll call this temp. So we've changed the string of character into a uint256 of temp. And we have our constructor. And then we have this send request. So what send request does, is it takes the information from our source and sends it to the Oracle network. This is how they get that code from us in order to run it in their sandboxed environments. So you can see here that we create a functions request. Uh, we initialize the request for inline JavaScript with our source. If there's any arguments that are passed in, we pass those in as well. And then we make that request via send request. And we return the last request ID. So this is when we call out to the functions network. We make that request out. And we talked about the callback gas limit. Well, that matters when we talk about the callback function, which is going to be fulfill request. So fulfill request is going to be when the functions network, those oracles, they come to consensus and they reach back into our contract to give us that information back. So here we check a few things to make sure that our request ID is correct. And then we save our response, the temp, and an error message if we have that. Now you notice this response here is having a problem, right? Because it's expecting it to be a string and we said it was going to be a uint256. So when the request comes back in, that response is stored as a bytes. So we need to unpack those bytes into our uint256. 
So we can do that with abi.decode. And then the first argument is going to be our response. And the second argument is going to be a tuple. That's going to be a uint256. And with that, we fixed that issue. And the next one is that in our response, we have this temp and it's expecting it to be a string as well. So we'll go back up to the event response. We'll change this string to be a uint256. And we should be good to go. So from here, we can compile and deploy our smart contract. My Solidity compiler is set up to auto compile anytime I make a change. If we click on the compiler tab here, I have auto compile checked. If you don't have that checked or don't want to check that, you can just click compile and that'll compile it for you. You should see a green check mark here when everything is good to go. Next, you click on the deploy and run tab. We need to make sure we change our environment to our injected provider. And remember, we're using Sepolia for this example. So I see Sepolia here and I can click on deploy and I can confirm this deployment. And I should see my deployed contract show up down here under deployed contracts when everything is done. All right, we've got a green check mark. I can see my deployed contract and we're good to go. The only thing we need to do now is we need to take this contract and add it to the consumer contracts in our function subscription that we created in the previous video. So let's do that now. We'll copy the address of this function. We'll head to our weather function call here. Under consumers, you can see we have no consumers. So we'll add a consumer here. We'll paste in the address and we'll click add consumer. We'll approve this transaction and our consumer was added. And we can see it here in the list of consumers. So with that, we've created a subscription, we have deployed our contract, and we've added it as a consumer. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to actually use our smart contract to call Chainlink functions. So check that out, and I'll catch you in the next one.